What's going on guys? Roadnet44 back at it again with another scenery design tutorial for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to rectify imagery generated with SBuilder X with the help of Global Mapper. So basically rectifying imagery would be taking the uh, imagery generated with SBuilder X which does not have any positioning data embedded into it and then assigning positioning data to it with the help of Global Mapper, which then can be exported as a GeoTIFF TIF format image for use with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So to get started, we need a couple of things here. One, you're going to need your original generated imagery uh, from SBuilder X. This will normally consist of a bitmap file a photo.01 inf file and a text file of the same name as the bitmap file. Now the main files that we need in here are this inf file and the bitmap file. It doesn't really matter if you have the text document or not with this method it doesn't matter. So first thing we need to do is we need to open up once again SBuilder X. And here I already have the project file loaded. This is SBuilder X315. We're going to go up to the File tab. Select Add Map from Disk. And then we're going to find our bitmap file in the folder I just had pulled up and hit Open. After it loads in, it's going to zoom out a little bit, but you'll be able to see the image there. You can just zoom into it. And what you're going to want to do is just click on the border of it so that it highlights the photo. Right click and hit calibrate. It's going to pop open this window, which is going to contain all the coordinate information for both the point one, which is at the top left corner of the image up here, and point two, which is at the bottom right image or corner of the image down here. So I'm going to throw this over in another monitor because Global Mapper requires that we convert this coordinate to decimal format. So Toss that over there, you won't be able to see it for a minute, and then I'm going to go to Google Chrome. Let's put that in full screen mode. This is the uh, Federal Communications Commission's website, FCC.gov. They have a coordinate conversion calculator on here. You can also find these at many other websites. There's quite a few of them out there, so if for whatever reason you cannot access this website in your country, then you can always find one on a different site and that's just uh, fcc.gov slash media slash radio slash dms dash decimal and it'll bring you to this page all right so i'm going to go ahead and put in my latitude and longitude in here for point number one and then i'm going to repeat the exact same thing for point number two we'll get the conversion put it in a text document over off screen here and then i can plug that into global mapper All right, then after we click on Convert to Decimal, it's going to pop down here our latitude and longitude in decimal format. So we're going to copy this over to a text document. And now we're going to do the exact same thing with point number two. And since it's the exact same thing, we're just going to skip to the next step here. So go ahead and pause the video while you do that, and then we'll meet you over in Global Mapper. All right, I have Global Mapper pulled up now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our folder again that contains our BMP file. And you're just going to click and drag it onto the window. And then when this window pops up here, you're going to say manually rectify image. Click OK. And then OK again. All right, so after that, the screen here is going to pop up. It's going to show a preview of your... Uh, imagery up here at the top and then down here at the bottom it's going to have some areas where you can input pixel positioning data as well as your latitude and your longitude. So we went ahead and converted our latitude and longitude for both points to decimal format and put that in our text document over here on the other screen. So I'm going to drag over this S Builder X window here again and you're going to notice uh, this pixel X and pixel Y. These are your positioning 
your uh, pixel positioning information for the top left and the bottom right corners. So zero, zero is the top left. Uh, pixel X here and pixel Y defines your bottom right. So that's 7,168 across the X axis and 12,544 along the Y axis, which lands us down here at the bottom right corner. So that's the pixel positioning information that we are going to be using in Global Mapper. So I'm going to drag that back off screen again, go back into Global Mapper. We're going to leave the pixel X and pixel Y as zero for the top left. We're going to put in our easting longitude as, let's see here, get it copied, copy. So this is basically going to be uh, upside down from uh, S Builder X. So longitudes on the bottom and latitudes on the top. And then as we go over to Global Mapper, it's exactly the opposite. Longitudes on top and latitude is on the bottom. Now, once we did the coordinate conversion, since we can see that our latitude here is a south latitude, this would make it a negative number. But since we only put in the, the numbers here and not the south, the conversion gave us a positive number. So just make sure you keep an eye on that as your uh, uh, with your latitude. If you're north, you're going to be a positive number. And if you're south, you're going to be a negative number. So we do need to change that to a negative 7.293001. Easting, because we're east, we're positive. So it's going to stay the exact same. So after we do that, hit add point to list. And we're going to title this TL for top left. And there we go. It puts that point there at the top left. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for the, um, for the bottom right corner. So pixel X. Let me make sure I get this right here. Um, I can't remember if this is upside down or not. We're going to find out. 7,168 by 12,544. And then we'll copy in. Once again, I'm going to keep that as a negative number. And we're going to copy over our longitude, which is going to stay a positive number. And once again, we'll hit add point the list and we'll name that BR bottom right. Copy. And it looks like I got it right. So X does equal X and Y does equal Y. Uh, same as on same as on S Builder X here. All right. So now that we got those positioned, we're going to hit apply and OK. OK again. And that's going to put that image in our scene here. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to export. Um, if you need to tweak on this image and global mapper for whatever reason, you can always go up here uh, and save workspace as and create a project file. But in this case, I just want to export this to a uh, basically a straight file that I can use for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're going to go to export raster image format. I'm going to export this as a PNG with a .map file as opposed to a straight TIF or GeoTIFF file. So we're going to say PNG 24-bit RGB. Uh, all this stays the same. Uncheck that. Uncheck that. Check the ozixplore.map file option and I don't have any uh, uh, transparent pixels so I'll uncheck that. Uh, tiling and bounds are fine as default for our purpose here. Click OK. Let's see I gotta get that path again. Paste. Okay. And we will save this as And we'll let this export.
All right, after that's done, we'll get rid of that window. We can go ahead and take this and close out of that. Downsize that or X out of it, one of the two. And then I'm going to open up um, QGIS. Whoops, that's uh, that may be what I want. It looks correct, so we'll roll with it. Yep, okay. Pull that open. So this is QGIS. This is a free program. It's basically the exact same thing as Global Mapper. Um, today I'm just showing you the Global Mapper process for uh, converting this imagery over. But I do want to use QGIS just to demonstrate something here. So we're going to go pull open this folder here where we exported our PNG file. So we got it down here at the bottom. It generated this PNG file and this .map file. Now what I want to do is I'm going to throw that off screen. I'm going to highlight the .map file. And I'm going to drag it over here to the Layers section. And we'll let that load into QGIS. Okay, now the imagery pops in. I have a Bing Maps tile server set up in here. To set that up, you're just going to go under XYZ Tiles, New Connection, and then when it asks you to put in the, the properties, hang on here, edit, there we go. You're going to put in this URL right here. I will put that down in the description down below. Uh, just when you go to click on it, YouTube redirects the URLs through their server. So they make their basically every URL embed in the descriptions of YouTube URL. Don't just right click on that and say copy link. You're actually going to want to click on that it's to take you to that link. And then you can copy the link from your, uh, your uh, URL bar at the top of your browser. That's the best way to get that. And after you get that all in, put it in, you're going to go ahead and double click on the Bing tile server here, which will load in the Bing imagery. It's going to populate it above your imagery that you imported in. So you're going to want to drag that up above the Bing imagery. And if we zoom in here, let's zoom in, let's say on this island right here. And we hide our imagery we can see that it pretty much exactly lines up with the Bing imagery. That is one way you can tell if you have successfully rectified your imagery. Another way is just downloading an actual like GeoTIFF source, putting it in the background and then lining that up. But this is an easier way to do it, just using a free program with a free input here. All right, and that is pretty much it. Um, that's how you bring your old S Builder X imagery over for use in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, this tutorial is not going to cover how you actually generate photoreal scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I will put another tutorial link down in the description below. It's a fairly good tutorial. You can follow that. Um, one of the, the one of the reasons I generated the map file is there is one program that you can use to generate tiles for um, Microsoft Flight Simulator that requires that dot map file as positioning. Another reason is is it allows me to if I ever want to bring it back into a GIS program after I have edited the photo in Photoshop, I can just use that dot map file to import it back in. Because if you have a GeoTIFF file which has the coordinates already embedded inside of it and you open that in Photoshop or GIMP to edit it and then save that again, it strips all that positioning data out of it. So having the positioning data separate from the actual image can be a really big help when it comes to backwards compatibility if you ever need to go back and input that data into a GIS program again. So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comment section below. I will try to answer as many questions as I can below. I do not get on this channel nearly as much as I probably should. So my apologies if it takes me a little while to get back to you. As always, if you guys have any other questions, FS Developer is a great community to post those in. And usually you can get a reply, a knowledgeable reply, fairly quickly. 
Anyways, guys, that's a wrap on this tutorial. So until next time, Rotonet44 out.